<laughs> well, let's get the uh, Silman rolling. All right, awesome. Yeah. Thank you for um, bringing that game in, Working Class Hero. It was appropriate, too, because we're going to be looking at Rookend games now. Yeah. So how nice is that? What a, what a coincidence. Mm -hmm. All right, so... I'm going to spy this in a second. You can keep going. Yeah, Rook Endgames uh, often simplify because they occur so often. Okay. Student might think that the first five parts of the book have left, left him with a sizable amount of Rook Endgame knowledge. You're still in Rook Endgame infancy, he says. And it will continue long after you make Master. Dang, even I'm in Rook Endgame infancy. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. All right, so let's talk about a Lucina position, but with a Rook Pawn. We already discussed the Lucina position, you know, what was it, part four? I forgot. <laughs> Hard uh, to remember all the parts. Yeah. Party of the first part. But now we'll look at a Lucina position where we've got a Rook Pawn instead of a Center Pawn or a Bishop Pawn or whatever it was. Like this. And here. And this. Yeah, and I've had, I'm sure you've had similar positions in Middle East Blitz chess. I have, for sure. And mm -hmm. even in tournament games, I've had a situation like this where we have a rook pawn left and we cut off the opponent's king. No, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, yes. Uh, here's a rule. If you're into memory prompts uh, and numbers such as four or more files don't do the job for you, Another way of stating this... Oh, okay, I should have read the, this early part first, so hold on a minute with that. We've learned that achieving a Lucina position guarantees a win unless the extra pawn is a rook pawn. The rule with a Lucina rook pawn... I'm using the word Lucina loosely here. Mm -hmm. Since a real Lucina position only occurs with a knight, bishop, or center pawns, is the black king needs to be cut off four or more files for white to win. One, two, three, four. So it's four mm -hmm. files away. So that's going to be enough to win. Whereas in the Luci normal Lucina position, one file is more than sufficient. But here you need to be four files away. Okay. So now here's the rule. If you're into memory pumps and you don't want to remember four files or more, uh, just remember this. It's a win if the enemy king is cut off on or beyond the bishop file, the further bishop file being this one. This is where the bishop starts. Okay, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, then if you're anywhere over beyond that, you know it's a win. You don't have to remember the number of files. Mm -hmm. I would agree that I like when it's, you know, a, a thing instead of a number. Mm -hmm. For me, that's easier. But everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, often, like Mark saying, the rook will just keep checking the king until you have to go in front of your pawn. So you'll get this position quite frequently because of that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, Alan. White's only plan is to get the rook to b8. You got to get your rook in there. Then we can get our king out and start to win. Um, White can force the win, but again, it, the king has to be far away. If the king's close, then he could come help. But here's all you need to do, rook c1. King e7, rook c8. Now here's the best defense, king d6. Let's say king d7. That would be sort of the normal move, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then rook b8, of course. Rook a2. And king b7. Don't blunder here with rook check. See, this is actually forcing the king forward. And now you're not able to escape with the king at all. Mm-hmm. All right, that's not going to work. So we get our king out. That's the winning technique. And then here, like this. Now we can just keep approaching the black rook. And if black ever stops checking and goes behind our pawn, we queen because our rook is defending. All right, okay. So this is a pretty easy win now at this point. There's nothing black can do. All right, so let's try, let's try king d6. We saw that king d7 wins with pretty easy technique there. Here. And king b7. 
escaping. Uh, playing rook b7 to try to play king b8 and queen is not going to help because they can play rook h2. Now if you play king b8, you're actually in mate. Yeah. How embarrassing would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Up a pawn and get mated. So rook b7 isn't the right technique, although it doesn't mess up the win if you just, you can go back, I think. But mm -hmm. after rook h2, you can just go back to b8. But anyways, king b7, That's how. this is the technique to try to win. Um, oh, he actually wants to go deeper into this variation. Rook b7, rook h2. Let's try rook g7, trying to step up and queen. Okay. We'll go back. Right. Now, okay, so that didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. So let's try rook b1. This is actually is messing it up. We could play king c7, and this is a dead draw. But let's spend a moment explaining why it's so drawn. First, uh, black to play, if it was black's turn right now, he would just play rook c2. And you're never kicking my king away, so I can always move my king up and down if you keep checking me mm -hmm. here. So that's sort of like the threat. To play rook c2, and you you can never kick my king off this file, so you can never escape with your king. You can never win, then, because mm -hmm. you can never promote your pawn. Uh, so, let's say... Right, okay, he just says all the stuff I'm saying. Okay, so white to move from here. Let's say it's white's turn, so white checks the king away. King d7, and steps up. I mean, rook d1 check and going back isn't going to help. Mm -hmm. um, if you try to build a bridge, here's the difference. Like, you remember you were building a bridge before? Yeah. You can't really build a bridge here because when you play rook c4, remember it was rook f4 in the other example because mm -hmm. we were on the e file. Yeah, I mean. You can't escape beyond the a file here to the, the, z, the double z file or whatever. So I'll play rook b2 and your king won't be able to escape. Whereas that wasn't a problem in the normal Lucina position because we can go to the left of the A pod. Oh, yeah. And then we did do that, and so mm -hmm. we got out of the deal. Do you memorize such lines or do you calculate every time this, a position pops up? Yeah, I like to calculate even if I know it's a win, just to be sure. It doesn't hurt to calculate, <laughs> right? Yeah. Human that much says, what about king e6 or d6? I don't know. I don't know when. I mean, you're not <laughs> sure when that was turned. Right, yeah. It's kind of hot in here. Oh yeah, Can you want me to lower it? Just like down to maybe seventy three. Yeah, that's good. Boop. <laughs> I like how it's so close. Yeah. All right. So King D seven. Uh. Well, I have to calculate, uh, dear Balak, because I don't have a lot of, you know years of experience and just memorized knowledge. And my calculation isn't that great. <laughs> now the difference here is that our rook isn't on b8 like in that other position. So we'll go here and now you can't queen. Mm -hmm. You have to go back and then I'll check you. And so you're not making progress. This is gonna draw. So that rook b7 isn't making any progress in this position because of that. Yeah, okay. But king b7, we can escape with our king. That's the way to try to win. Seems like both you know, both examples we've seen so far, we have to get the king in front. Yeah, and it's also important for the rook to be here so we can queen. Right, yeah. And Otherwise, uh, they'll just check us forever, mm -hmm. and then we have to always protect our pawn. But here now, if they check us and we escape, and then they go back to a2, we can queen. So that's an important, this is an important procedure to understand. Uh, let's see, so check. Now we can play king c8. The only good move is king c8. If king a6, sort of the normal way to go, 
we're not making progress because this is why king d6 is a tougher defense. Yeah. Now we're in opposition. We can't step this way. If we go to the a file, however, we check and attack the pawn. So you have to go back to b6. Right, yeah. So in order to escape with the king, you have to play king c8. Rook c2, check. King d8. Now we can try to mate him. So you can't queen because I'll mate you. Mm hmm so check. Also, by the way, king e8 doesn't work because we can check and then win your pawn. Oh, yeah. So that's not going to work. So check. And king c5. King e5 makes it a little easier for white. White can play rook a6. And now we're going to avoid checks eventually. Right? I mm -hmm. mean, no matter how you check, I can avoid it. Like, you check here, I go there. Right. And if you check here, I can just get in front of your king. Or put your king in between. So you can't check anymore. Right. Yeah. So king c5 is a tougher defense. Because now we're actually going to have to use some technique. Um, rook c6 check x clam. The idea is that if you take it, I queen with check, so you don't have time to win my queen. Now the real question is, why doesn't this still win like it did earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Check. Check. You can't step up here because I'll win your rook and I'm winning. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to go to f8. Check. And then a8. Now I forced your king as far away as possible. I'm going to go here and then there and then win your pawn. Uh, yeah. You can't really stop me from doing that without losing your pawn. So rook a6 doesn't win because of that. So that's why this is a tougher move. We can't walk this way <clears throat> yeah, that as we sense. did against king e5. So rook c6 check, you're going to need some specific technique to win this. Uh, not taking the rook doesn't help because uh, we'll play rook c8, I guess. Yeah, for example, king b5, rook c8, followed by queening. And we can even hide if they keep checking us now on b8. All mm -hmm. done at yeah. this point. Yeah, we can play later, Cameron, but we're going to do a bit of uh, learning for a bit. Learning is fun. <laughs> but definitely we can play. He's anxious to beat me down again. Didn't you beat him last time? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and if we go over here, now this will win because we can run this way. Because we forced the king off of c5 so we can go to b6 if they keep checking us. See, we couldn't do that with the king on c5. Right. And now we win. So the best try, I guess, is to take, but after queen, we'll win. Now, usually it's pretty difficult to win queen against rook, if the rook knows how to defend it. Uh, I can, In fact, he says, I can imagine some of you looking on in horror and thinking, I'm not sure I, I know how to win queen versus rook. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the contents, you, he doesn't cover queen against rook in this endgame uh, course. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they have one of those drills on the chess.com. Uh, I'm sure they don't because you can't even somebody who knows what they're doing has a very hard time beating a computer I see with a queen although I think Mark can do it actually Mark's like really good at queen against rook specifically mm -hmm. but yeah here the the problem is that this rook is far away from the king so it's gonna be fork town as you might imagine you just have to play it precisely mm -hmm. Rook, um, Mark, yeah, Mark just said it's simple. <laughs> well, the one here is simple. Yeah, because the rook is falling. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is, yeah, Alan, this is from the Silman's in-game book, and mm -hmm. all of um, the recent ones are still on the Twitch video on demand. And if those have fallen off already, they're all on our, U our Chess Club YouTube yes. um, channel. And hey, user, user, how's it going? And hey, computer flight. They have those different queen versus rooks, I think, because they're just like the end of it. You know, like the, the very end of queen versus rook where the queen mates by force or the rook forces a stalemate probably. 
Mm-hmm. I don't think they just have like a random position, queen versus rook, but maybe. Mm. Hey, wild and pawn. Maybe they do. I don't know. All right, so here king c5 is the only reasonable move. If you go to any of these squares, queen b8 wins the, the rook. Queen c8 check. King d4. Queen g4 check. King d5. Queen f5 check. King c6. Yeah, you gotta watch out for this move, right? If you go, you put your king anywhere else, it's it's forked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So you have to try king c6. And now you're done. If you put the king anywhere here, it's queen c7. Well, those are the only legal moves for the king. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna win the rook. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if the rook and king are so separated, then you can you can force a win of with a fork like fork, this. Yeah. I'm sure, it's not the only sequence of moves that forced a, a win, but yeah. Yeah, and that's what Mark's saying exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wild and pawn. Well, I don't know who won our game, but I'm glad that that uh, got you here or got, <laughs> piqued your interest. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you possess the Lucina position, but with a rook pawn. You can only win if the enemy king is trapped four or more files away beyond the, the bishop the bishop uh, file, like we mentioned. So that's something that you have to remember. You can't win it if it's not uh, further away. Um, so it's a draw if the defending king is three files or closer to, from the pawn, as was explained in the earlier example. But let's start from scratch. Well, these are the um, this oh. that was the Lucina position but with, a rook, with pawn. the rook pawn. Um, human that much. Um, French Empire, you know, Ben is not here. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> He's sleeping like a grandmaster. All right, so this position with White to play, this is a draw. Black's king is close enough to trap White's king in the corner. Let's say rook h1. King d7. See, here's the, the difference. We were playing rook c8 like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. But now playing rook c8 is not going to help because he's too close. He'll play king d7 and oh, then yeah, and you can't, you can't play rook c8. Yeah. So rook c1, rook c8 isn't working. So we can try like this. Rook h8. Trying to go there. With perfect play, and I'm sorry, I'll space out for a how many, where did the king start out on the e-file? Okay. Yeah. So, so with it's, perfect. It's more, it's closer than the, the bishop right. file. Right. So with perfect play, what should happen? Draw. Okay. That's yeah, the king has to be over that's to the I bishop thought. file okay. in order to win. Just making sure. You got it. All right. Rook b8. So it took white a little extra time, and now black's king is in a really good square. Rook h2. Rook b7 check, king c8. So yeah, we can check back and forth, but then we're not getting kicked. So we'll go here. Mm -hmm. Now how do you think black should play? Um... We looked at a similar position before, actually. <clears throat> Well, yes, computer flight, but black was one file closer because he's on the E file instead of the F file. Let's see well, what I thought of looks bad. Maybe rook c2? Better than the chat, huh? Nobody in the chat said rook c2. Mm -hmm. Well, he actually just put it up there, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, rook c2, exactly right. Mm -hmm, Very good. if they check the king away... Then they could potentially win. Yeah. Now they can't potentially win. Mm -hmm. Rook h7, which a lot of people said, that's like the worst possible move almost. I just check and win your rook. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Trying to lose on purpose? Yeah, here. Now you can't check me. So my king is staying on the c file for all of eternity. Just go back and forth. You can't ever escape with your king, so you can't ever promote your pawn. So it's a draw. Hey, intelligent. Nice. Hey, Ema fifty nine. So yeah, when the king is too close, then it's 
getting here faster, White doesn't have the time to play Rook B8 anymore. I mean, he does have the time to get there, but the king is already very close. <clears throat> and uh, we can't escape with our king. Right, yeah. And obviously any closer would be the same. I mean, black doesn't mind to waste a tempo to get to the same position we just looked at. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, we are streaming earlier because we wanted to go a little bit longer to make up for no stream yesterday. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's look at another common scenario where the opposing rook is in front of the pawn. Okay. So here black is pretty clearly lost. Mm -hmm. Now white's rook is looking great. Beautiful rook. And black's rook's terrible. As everyone knows, rooks belong behind past pawns for both sides. Who said that? Was it Tartikow or I forgot? Hey, thanks Rufus Blunder. 500 I thought it bits. was the, what, who's the my, Tarash, my system guy? That's Nimsevich. What a Nimsevich? I thought it was maybe Tarash or Tartikower. Mm, I think, yeah. My hair looks a little funny today. Well, usually I shower at night, but I showered in the morning today, so it does affect how my hair looks. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Pence said it. Okay. Okay. That sounds like something he might say. He might say, I can't be in the same room with a rook, you know, not allowed to because of my <laughs> religion or whatever. <laughs> okay. So white wins this pretty easily, as you might imagine. You know, no contest there. Yeah. Rule, both sides should try to get their rook behind past pawns. So defensively, having your rook behind the enemy pawn is of enormous, imp enormous importance. Let's take the this, this same example but flip the rooks. Like that, and then like that. Now the position should be a draw. White can't win because Black's Rook has the ideal defensive stance, and White's Rook is stuck in the corner guarding his pawn. Um, White's only chance is to defend the, with the king and then get the Rook out, then we could try to win. We could even sneak our king in front after and win like how we saw as long as the king is far enough away. Mm -hmm. Right, at least. And it is, you know, beyond the bishop file. Uh, let's see, anybody saying something funny? Well, computer file is pretty mm -hmm. funny. Yeah, we're actually just using the chess.com analysis board, mm -hmm. Walden Pawn. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> king c5, <clears throat> and he goes rook a2. Many moves are fine. For example, king g7 does the job. Even checking is okay. Uh, but black shouldn't get too overzealous with the checks, for example. Check, king b6, check. Um, he actually goes back here. Interesting to play like this. Okay, so this is all still okay. You just go to a1 and draw. But rook c1 check does not draw. After king b2, it's going to win. You can't get behind the pawn anymore. And if you go here, I can check and queen and win queen against rook. Okay. And obviously, if you don't attack the pawn, I'll just move my rook and queen. So you got to be careful about all them checks. When I'm bouncing them checks. Uh, here's another good way to lose. Rook a5 check. Blunder. Now we'll go here, attacking the rook and protecting our pawn. Once the rook moves away, we can move our rook out of the way and then sneak our king in front after the checks and then win like how we just saw in the previous example. So, yeah, you can't be just checking all willy-nilly. Here. <clears throat> I didn't know that there were Stillman courses in chess.com. You mean um, videos are actually interactive? Um, oh, he wrote um, things for them. I didn't even know that. Interesting. Like cool. unique things for them? Yeah, we'll have to look at it it's maybe at the end of all this. The drill section is nice for end games. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I practiced the two bishop mate yesterday. 
Well, actually, user, user, that's not entirely true. The king does well to stay on g7 and h7. It's like how Mark said, actually, because if, uh, like, let's say your king moves towards here, goes to even f7 or e7 or whatever, then I could play rook h8 and I'll win with rook h8, because then you can't take my pawn, I'll check and win your rook, which is what we just saw in, in uh, what's his what's his name? I forgot already. Yeah, I, working, I think it was working class hero. Yeah, I don't think user was here yet, but yeah, that's a that's pretty true. common tactic, yeah. Yes. So it's actually Swing smart it for, to just town. keep the king here, right? Bring mm -hmm. it around town. <laughs> exactly. So rook a, rook a2, that should be the easiest defense. Now here's the rule, when they're protecting your their pawn, they're threatening to move their rook away, right? Right, yeah. So now we have to check them. Don't oh. let them stay protecting your pawn. That's what he says. In these, in these positions, whenever the king touches the pawn, trying to free its rook, the defender should smack it away with a check. Mm -hmm. Big check. Absolutely. Gets out of the way, and now we can go back. Remember, the defending rook needs to be behind the enemy past pawn. Failing to do so will allow the white rook to escape. He's protecting the pawn, so we check him. And then he's not protecting the pawn, so we go back. White's insurmountable problem is now clear. Black will check the king whenever it touches the pawn. And then when that king and pawn contact is lost, the rook will go back behind the pawn. And le this leaves white with no constructive ideas. White can just accept a draw at this point. Useful advice. It's often critically important to get your rook behind a passed pawn, whether it's your passed pawn or your opponent's. Yeah, we need to make it so that um, we have it, computer flight, we have exceptions for chess.com. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, darn, Mr. Ilyas. <laughs> I'll try to fix it for the next stream. I just don't want to take time up right now to fix it, but I agree that we, we should be able to post chess.com links. Oh, you allowed them? Hmm. I wonder why it's not letting them. Maybe because it has like a beginning part that, you know, like something mm -hmm. slash chess.com yeah, or could dot be. Chess .com, you know? I think that they usually have it affixed, but... Um... Perhaps. Maybe they should affix it. <laughs> so here, this is the same situation. This should be a draw, but this is exactly what I was talking about with user, user, that uh, black shouldn't... Black should just move like the rook up, you know, do nothing. King h7 is fine. But a lot of times you might be tempted to just force the draw by going and taking the pawn. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to work, as we've seen. King f7, rook h8, and now white wins. You take the pawn, you get skewered. Right, yeah. Just as, uh, just as we saw in, in Working Class Heroes game. So watch out for that one. Also, going obviously to the 6th rank or further... Is, is never appropriate because we can always just check you and queen. You don't even need a tactic for that. Oh, uh, yeah. I so, yeah, like, you have to stay here. I was about to ask that. <laughs> I know this <laughs> seems obvious. It. I just forgot. <laughs> yeah, I remember this position from Ben's lecture. Right, this is a pretty common situation. How's it mm -hmm. going, Joko fan? Yeah, Joko fan. Only one C in Joko, though. I don't know about mm -hmm. that. Are you really a fan, then? <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody send me a whisper if they figure out the issues with posting links and then I can try to fix it later because I see that you guys are talking about it but I'm not paying attention <laughs> I would like to fix it though all right let's say that we have this situation but a, a step back such as here check and then that's there okay here we go white to play All right, so here's an important question. If black gets his rook behind your passed pawn with your rook in front of it, but the pawn's on the sixth rank, mm -hmm. should you push it to the seventh rank or leave it? Well, as you might imagine now, if you push to the seventh rank, it's going to be a draw. This is the same thing we just saw. Mm -hmm. um, so pushing to a7 creates an instant draw. The previous example should have convinced you of this. But white's rook, because white's rook will remain passive forever and any attempt to defend the pawn with the king you'll get checked away and the rook will go behind your pawn again after you move away with your king so here's the real question how can white try to win 
but it turns out white has many advantages. His king can easily break black's block on the second rank here by scurrying over to b1. Scurrying was his word, of course. <laughs> so then we can be allowed to move forward after that. When the pawn's in the seventh rank, white's king has nowhere to hide. But here, because it's on the sixth rank, white does have a square to hide with this king. So if we have our king already in the center and they're checking us from behind like they do, mm -hmm. we can hide in front of a7 <clears throat> and try to win that way. Okay. Black's king is forever stuck on h7 and g7. Since any attempt to run over would be, like let's say he's on e7, we'll play a7. And then we'll have time to go back around right, and yeah. win, like how we saw already. So uh, the king actually has to stay. Actually, I think the king could go to f7, F7 right? F7, yeah. Because then after a7, it just goes straight back. Mm -hmm. But if he's too far away, then we can do our trick again. All these facts make it sound like white should prevail. And if black tries to maintain his rook's position behind the passed pawn, white will indeed be able to claim victory. So let's take a look. Here? Hey, Scottish demon go here. Black's king can't participate in the defense. Let's say king f7. Now if a7, king g7 is what he says, like how we were talking about. Yeah. But now if he goes e7, now we'll play a7. And suddenly black's king can't get back to g7, h8, or h7, and uh, he'll lose. For example, here, there and wins, like mm -hmm. how we already saw. Too bad he's like not close enough to go there. <laughs> Just one tempo away from that. So king h7, king e1, king g7, there. All right, we did it. We got our king over attacking the rook, breaking down the blockade on the second rank. So we'll have to move our rook up. Let's try this. Hey, Pinky Jam. Well, we started a little early. Black doesn't intend to go too far. If a7, he can still run here. King b5. Now here we have that same scenario we talked about in the other situation when the pawn was in the seventh rank. Mm -hmm. The king is protecting the pawn, here, thereby allowing the rook to try to escape. Right? Mm-hmm. But I guess we'll check them, right? Yes. Pretty good at guessing. Mm -hmm. But now here we can hide right. on a7. White's king has reached the safe haven on a7, and white's rook is ready to finally emerge. Now we can go here, because he can't do the same a7 rook h8 trick because his king's on a7. So we might as well get our king out. Now black can resign, because you're just doing that, and you mm -hmm. can't stop him at all. There's no way. For example, here, check. Oh, you can even go here. If you do that, we can block. I guess you get one more check, though. <laughs> one more baby check, but then that's it. All right, so that won that time for white. So here's what's a rule that he's giving. When defending these positions, the normally successful passive defense, just moving the king back and forth and so on, which works so well when the stronger side had the pawn in the seventh rank, um, doesn't work, succeed here if the pawn's in the sixth rank. Right? We saw that white won. Right. And it was forced if black defends in this manner. It's a win. Hey, Pat Sirius. Hey, C.L. Smith. Spite checks are important. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Especially like in a blitz game. So is this a win after all? No. Black can save the game if he's familiar with the surprisingly little known, although extremely, extremely important, Vancura position. This happened, I remember, in a Nakamura game where um, I, I, one of them, Nakamura or his opponent, were they were up three pawns, but it was a draw because of this Vancura technique. It's, I'm sorry, it's called what again? Vancura position. Vancura position. Yes. Okay. So let's look at the, how we can set it up. I think that you did a lot working class hero. Mm -hmm. 
So either side to move in this position, it's a draw. Uh, just as the pawn in the seventh rank deprived White's king of any cover, uh, the flexible de position of the defense defensive rook um, does the same thing, since black can check on the f file. So we can't hide here, is what he's saying, because we can check you. Um, his rook attacks a6, thereby pinning this rook down. It has to stay in front of the pawn. Mm -hmm. And white's king has nowhere to hide. For example, if this wasn't a rook pawn, then we could go to a6. Right, yeah. But here we don't have that ability. So let's play this. Protecting the pawn, uh, threatening to move the rook and win in that case. But now we check from the side. Like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be mentioned, by the way, that a7 will get back to the draw we already saw earlier, like this. And then here. And then we'll check him if he protects, or we'll go back when he steps away from the pawn. But we already saw that. So king b5. Now we have to check from the side, like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take responsibility, working class hero. <laughs> Rook b6. This is an important move to keep contact with the, the pawn. So that this rook has to babysit the whole time. And also if a7, we can always play rook a6. Black could also draw with king h7, for example. Yeah. King h7 and rook g6 is fine. You know, to, as a setup, he's just keeping king g7 and with the idea of ever playing rook f6 if we need to. Because we need to always be able to keep all these checks open. Like, you don't want to play rook g6 and then the guy can hide here if you check him. Because you're, you know, you're blocked there. Uh, let's see, so king e5, rook c6, rook a7 check. White's running out of ideas. So you might as well try to check him, right? Got to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook f6. Check. 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 But obviously, you got nowhere to go. So this is going to be a draw. White can't make any progress here. We just check him till the end of days. And then if he runs all the way like up here... We could just put our rook back on the sixth rank to attack the pawns so that his rook can't run away. Right, yeah. So it's important when there are pawns in the sixth rank, you want to check from the side. Okay. That's how you do it. You can't defend the same way if the pawn's in the sixth rank or the seventh rank. you got to try them a little differently. Caesar's talking a lot of jive. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Scottish demon goat says, too much work, I'd rather lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That you'll sounds about right. You'll stick the AirPods in, though, so the stream will be with me. Yay. I'm glad that you'll still be listening then, working class here. Yeah, go get a beer. I wouldn't mind having one, too. <laughs> right. If only there was one in the fridge here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, but I've already got tea. Dang. Already went a different way. <laughs> All right, so now we'll go back to this position where we now know it's a draw, but we saw that Black's drawing technique wasn't appropriate. If he runs over here and we just keep our rook behind the pawn, he'll bring his king up to a7 and win. So how does Black draw this? Make sure it's white to play here. Okay, king f1. Rook a5. Okay, we can check. I don't think it's strictly necessary. But yeah, now we'll go here. We touch the pawn. Again, this is important so his rook can't get out from in front. And now we've already achieved the Vancura setup. If our rook can check here, here, and here as the king is approaching, there's no problem. And if the king goes far back, like we said, we go back to the sixth rank to hit the pawn again. And if the pawn ever pushes, we get behind the pawn and we draw in that fashion. Like how we've already seen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is already like, there's nothing to analyze here draw. There's no way white can even attempt to win if we check from the side. So this is good defensive technique to understand. Yeah, definitely. The pawn's in the sixth, we want to check from the side because he could step in front of the pot. But, so we check from the 
the side in case he does that. Right. Exactly. But once the pawn's pushed, then we can put our rook behind the pawn, and that'll be a draw. And then when the king approaches, we check him and step back. So hopefully everybody understands this stuff. Mm -hmm. And right, this Vancura position, it works even if the ex the side has extra rook pawns. Like uh, the Nakamura example, the guy had a pawn like here and here. There were like three rook pawns, and, and white couldn't win because of, the Vancou because of this technique, this okay. drawing technique. The king could never hide anywhere because they're all rook pawns. If anything was not a rook pawn, he could have won. I don't know if Nakamura was winning or drawing. I forgot. Um, but... You know, I forgot. I mean, I forgot if he was the stronger side or the or mm -hmm. the weaker side. But, and I forgot who his opponent was. <laughs> it might have been Aronian, but it might have been Carlson. I don't really remember. Maybe somebody in the chat remembers, but probably not. Mm -hmm. Hey, Casper Vid. I think you're. Aren't you a minor, Cameron? No beer. <laughs> oh yeah, you say I don't drink beer, but what it t you know what it tastes like. <laughs> but maybe he is asking what it tastes like. Oh, but oh, what's it, it taste like? like? I don't know. It's hard to say because he mm -hmm. didn't put a question mark. <laughs> All right. Let's try a different example. Okay. That's right. But now let's move everything over. Move it on over. Yeah. It's a slight, slight bitter taste depending on the kind. I agree with that. One time I was at karaoke and, and this dude bought me a beer because I nailed the song that I was singing. Yeah. And I took one sip of it and I'm like, this is disgusting. What kind of beer was it? I oh, forgot. It was some super disgusting beer. Oh, do you not drink? <laughs> well, you drink beer though. But, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm, it's just gross. <laughs> I'm, I'm picky. Definitely. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly bought me a um, shot the other night. Oh, well, yeah? Mm-hmm. Nice. Shots, 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 shots. Mm -hmm. You know that song? I've heard it. Everybody. Did you go? <laughs> did you go Thursday night? I didn't go. Okay. And I won't go tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not going tonight either. <laughs> All right. As with the case with the a pawn, White wants to rush his king in front of the pawn. This time on b7, with a one game. Now the Venkura position doesn't work because the king has access to a6. Oh, okay. So if we check from the side, he'll just go to a6. By the way, b7 is a draw because uh, now if we ever get our – we draw like how we saw earlier. If we get our king to protect, we check mm -hmm. with black, and then we can just put our rook behind the pawn. So there's no way to win from there. Oh, we got a donation, $5. Yay. From Market. Thank you, Market Mark Sands. Sands. Mark at Sands. Thanks for that donation. Nice. Yay. So, yeah, don't try to push the pawn here because we we want we want to make him like we have two access points for our king now. Right. Yeah, can yeah if they check around. from the side, we go go we can go here. If they check from behind, then we can go there. Mm -hmm. and he can't stop us from approaching both. Right. So we'll win this position. King F1. We can try the Vancura defense here. For example, Yeah, this this would be a draw if this stuff was here. As we saw. Right. But now we go to A6, and Black can already sort of resign at this point. Yay, thank you, Casper Vid. Nice. Thanks for subscriptions. Yeah, thank you for subscribing. Really cool. Oh, for a beer. Thank you, Market Sands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sai with a, a 200 bits. Yay. I said it even before the noise. You did. Because I just happened to be looking Everybody's at the going chat. crazy. <laughs> Yay, Sai Bradbury. And nice. he hello to Bridget. All right, let's uh, let's try it again. Here, King F one. So now Black can try King F seven. See, Black doesn't have to worry about this right now, because the pawn's not yet on B seven. Okay. Yeah. So King F seven. So if B seven, King G seven. Okay, as you might imagine, so we mm -hmm. don't get tricked with Rook H eight. So let's try King E one. But now here's the difference. Black actually can play king e7 here. If we try to play b7, king d7, rook h8, we can take the pawn, check, and our king is close enough to defend our rook. Oh, uh, yeah. This is what I was mentioning last time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is actually a drawing technique here. Um, now, if you don't play here and here, uh, he'll just go take your pawn. Right. But, yeah, this is going to be a draw. 
and draws. So this position with best technique, with best play, this position is a draw. Black can rush and go take the pawn, where he couldn't do that before because the pawn was too far away. Rook h8 was a winning tactic. But here the pawn is close enough that the king can approach, and if you do this, he's just in time to protect his rook, right. as we saw. <clears throat> so we have two important rules. When combating a rook pawn on the sixth rank, when the stronger side's rook is in front of his pawn, and the defender's king, or the stronger side's king is off, you know, in into the hinterlands. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I guess not, you know, hinterlands close to the is far away, yeah. The Vankira position is the defender's road to salvation. When combating a knight pawn on the sixth rank, the Vankira position is no longer sufficient to draw, but keeping the rook behind the pawn and running your king over is enough to draw with a knight against the knight pawn as long as the king is in hinterland. <laughs> Obviously, if the king's already helping, it's probably going to win. Yeah, right. In fact, yeah, definitely a win, like in a Lucina position, if we get our king in front, that's, that's going to be a Lucina position that we've right. already looked at earlier in part four, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right, pretty good. You want to keep it going? Yeah, let's keep it going. All right. Um, hello, Adam Dark Squares. I can't remember if I said hello to you. I actually need to run to the restroom real quick. All right. I'll be right well, back. We can take a small pause, yeah, though. Yeah, we can just chat for a second. Um, all this tea. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Uh -huh. Oh, Cameron really wants to play chess. <laughs> Too bad, Cameron. You're going to have to learn. That's just how it is. Let me, uh, I've got some time to fix my hair now. Ah, it's getting worse. This is crazy. You guys see it getting worse? <laughs> It's just got worse and worse. All right, that's as good as I can do now. <laughs> it's like when you work on a computer and you're like trying to fix like hardware and you're like, oh, this is worse than I when I started. <laughs> At least that's how it goes for me. Tell her not to wash her hands so she can hurry up. <laughs> Aren't you too young for Seinfeld Spencer's? Yeah, I don't like Seinfeld very much, I'll say. I prefer Curb Your Enthusiasm. Definitely. Spencer, how much percentage of your learning time has been devoted to endgames? Very minimal. I would say probably 10% or less, uh, if I had to guess. You know, but that's just a guess. Perfect time for a quick three nights, mate. I'm never going to show that. I don't even know how to do it. I could, uh, you know, figure it out. But uh, Frasier better than Seinfeld? I don't know. I, I haven't watched many Frasiers. Me neither. I would have to. I like Seinfeld better a little bit. But I believe that it could be better than Seinfeld. You know, setting the bar kind of low, in my opinion. You're not a bit, a bit. Yeah, you're not a Seinfeld. I, I like mean, Jerry is just so stupid and not funny. <laughs> if yeah. you replace Seinfeld with somebody else, then I might like the show. Yeah, but the other people are funny. That's true. I love <laughs> the other George. Are better. George is. Oh yeah, he's the best. Greatest. You know, obviously. Of all. Frankly. Of them. <laughs> yeah. But um, all right. So back to business. All right, rook and pawn on the fourth or fifth rank versus a rook. So it'll still be rook and pawn against rook. This time the pawn will be a little bit further back. I did wash my hands, Cameron. <laughs> Cameron said to tell you not to wash your hands so you get back faster. <laughs> um, they were talking about me. Is that what they were saying? My hair's sticking up. <laughs> my hair's sticking up too. Look, What's look. going on? <laughs> um, All right, it's very staticky in this room. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll just ignore it. All George's right. parents are the best characters in Seinfeld. Yeah, I love George's yeah? parents. It's hard to argue with that. <laughs> really hard to argue against Yeah, they're that. great. All the parents are great on there. All right, all right, so we've already determined that the game is easily drawn if the defending king can get in front of the pawn, like the Philidor position that we talked about in part four. However, what happens if the defending king is trapped one or more files to the side of the pawn? The result of the endgame depends on whether or not the stronger side can reach a Lucina position, which should win. And this is determined by the following specific rules. Uh, as usual, rook pawns form exceptions, so we'll only explore knight, bishop, or center pawns. Here's a rule. A pawn on the fifth rank or beyond wins if the defending king is cut off by one file on the long side of the board. Wait, I'm sorry. Read it one more time. That last well, thing. first you have to know what the long side of the board is. Okay. So in chess, it's chess is an 8x8 eight eight board, right? Right. So that means that if you have one pawn left, you're, you're going to cut the board into two sides, not including the file that the board is on. 
or that the pawn the is pawn's on, on. Okay. rather. Like let's say this for example. Okay. So then this pawn is cutting the board in into two pieces oh, okay. that are not equal halves. Yes. Because uh, you know there's seven files remaining. Mm -hmm. So this is the long side and that's the short side. Okay. I understand that. Oh. Get out of here. <laughs> I've never heard heard it referred to that. That is important for a lot of work upon end games. Okay. Absolutely. So that's something that you're gonna have to get that jargon you're gonna yeah, have to yeah, get definitely. used to, definitely. Chat has separation anxiety. <laughs> oh bye neurononum. <laughs> Take it easy. I I agree Fraser's not better. But so. I do agree that SpongeBob is better than those shows. <laughs> definitely. All right, so a pawn on the fifth rank or beyond wins if the defending king is cut off by one file on the long side of the board. Now, a pawn on the fourth rank wins if the defending king is cut off by two files. A knight pawn is an exception, and it, you'll, have to, you'll have to be three files away. All right, so let's look at all of these examples. Yeah, because I can't remember it without seeing it. Seeing is believing. Also, when he says fifth rank or beyond, I don't know what beyond means. So I mean fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth? Well, obviously eighth should win. <laughs> All right. Yay, beer. All right, this position um, is a good illustration of our fifth rank rule. A pawn on the fifth rank or beyond wins if the defending king is cut off by one file on the long side of the board. So this is the long side, mm -hmm. obviously. Okay. Frankly. Oh, okay. And so that's the short side. There's only one. Oh, I see. So one, okay. Towards the direction of the long side, so one All right. pile. Yes. All right, I see that. Exactly. So the king's on the long side, the long side, wrong side, and that's not where he wants to be. Mm -hmm. um, now it's time to address the long side and short side of the pawn. The short side, this is why I already said this. I would have said this earlier, but I didn't write the book, so... <laughs> The point is that the defending rook can use the long side for long distance checking. See, I can move my rook all the way over here and check you, and you can't approach without having to move very far away from my pawn. Mm -hmm. And that's why having the king on the long side is better to win and tougher to defend in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see, just skipping a bunch of words. Yeah, he is saying it's very flowery language. <laughs> All right, so white to play, hopefully. Yes, here we go. King h5, preparing to advance the pawn. If black does nothing, white wins easily, like this. Mm -hmm. Easy to win. Check. Now we're threatening king g7, g6, mainly, etc. Check. Now we got to defend our pawn, so we'll go here. Check. Now we don't have to defend our pawn, so we can step up. So it already looks like a Lucina position. If not rook g1, white would play here and then there, and then that is a Lucina position with the king on the eighth rank that mm -hmm. we already looked at. So we'll go here, king h7. Now, of course, if you check, I'll get king g8, then I'll get g7, then we'll win in, in Lucina style. So um, he tries king e7 here. But then we still get it. Yeah. And now we're going to win like how we saw already in the Lucina position uh, from part four. In a pawn down rook endgame where the defending king can no longer stay in front of the enemy pawn, the defender should always move his king to the short side of the board so that his rook will have the checking distance. So like if your rook was here and the other king was over there, then we can try to check from the side and have a far distance away from this king. Whereas now we can't even attempt that because it's such a short side. That's too short. Right, yeah. Even Nigel short. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but it's still pretty short. All right. Now, let's... That was easy, right? But let's make sure that the defending king is really cut off because sometimes it could be a little tricky. Here we go, like this. Black to play. So this is almost identical to what we just looked at. I only moved the king up one file. I mean one rank, obviously. I only moved it up one rank to uh, e7 instead of e6. Mm -hmm. um, but here a black to play actually draws. Because... Uh, 
Oh, I'm just reading something because it had my name in it, but it's okay. Oh, when you say check? Yeah, no, it's something else. Oh. It's already gone. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm way better at writing jokes than Seinfeld. Come on. <laughs> I'll tell a Seinfeld joke. What about when you're on an airplane and the food isn't very good? Well, his stand-up is no good, but the show is funny to me because it's on song. What about? <laughs> you like that? That doesn't bother me. It bothers me. That sound? <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. Mm. Spot on impression. See, that, no, no, <laughs> yeah, that was a good impression. That doesn't bother me because the other characters to me are so funny. That's true. I do like the other characters me, a lot. George, more. I love George. And I like Newman. Yeah, Newman's good. Newman's good, but even still, it just how come the worst character is the like I know, name, it's the crazy. central part of it? You can't you <laughs> can't act. Anyways, uh, so here it's black to play. This is a draw, almost identical, but black draws with rook f8. Now our king is not cut off. We're gonna move here. And trading will be a draw on king and pawn game that we've seen in part like two or three or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, rook a2, king f7, x clam. Got him. And that's it for this example. This is a draw if our king's in front because we already looked at the Philidor position. Right. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about the short side. There we go. Well, Spencer doesn't like the show. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's just not, I mean, it's not like I hate it. It's just, you know, I wouldn't watch it if it's mm -hmm. on. I'll turn the channel to something else. Mm -hmm. But there, yeah. there are worse shows Definitely. I could think of. All right. Our next example shows how the defender can draw against a pawn on the fifth rank if the king is on the shorter side. So clearly, this side with three files to the left of the pawn, that is a... Uh, that is the short side. Look, I always wondered this. You see how I accidentally opened up that dialog box? Yeah. It's not there on the screen. Oh. I always no wondered if, if you could see oh, those yeah, accidental Oh, yeah, because it's a Windows dialog mm -hmm. and not part of the chess.com right. dialog um, pop-ups. So this is the long side, and that's the short side. So now the king is on the short side. And we'll see that we can draw this, actually, I believe. That's pretty, pretty sure. <laughs> okay. And hang on. Yeah, intelligent... Um, I actually am dying to play Among Us. I have not played it yet, but my older son is going to show me how to play it when I get a free moment. Um, but yeah, I think it looks fun. <laughs> anyway. Is Spencer an Everybody Loves Raymond kind of guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> I love, I love that show. What? I love that you show. You love Everybody Loves Raymond? I love it. And I didn't watch it when it originally came on. I saw it as reruns. Yeah? Yeah, I thought it was really funny. And then there was some other show after that that he was on. Um, I can't remember the name of that show. It had like three men as the main characters. Two and a half men? <laughs> no. I know. I love that show, was... too. But I it was never a more, watched that. a more serious role. Yeah, really? I only like animated sitcoms. Durr. Mm. Durr Balik. Any advice how to memorize the algebraic notations? I have the you same problem. You just have to get better at chess. I think That's you just keep is. playing toilet break. I, they do have the square um, memorizing tools on both Lee Chess and Chess.com, but I don't think those are any good. Um, I think I've just slowly gotten better with them so I don't have to think about the name of the square as I've played. But... Men of a Certain Age. That was it, Alan. Yeah, that was a good show. Nice, nice. Thank you. Called it. <laughs> All right, so Black's right. King's on the short side. Black draws by giving his rook checking distance on the long side. Uh, sorry, I was trying to make sure whose move it was, but I keep I always do that. Press mm. the wrong button there. Oh, yeah. Rook H8. So now we can check along the long side if we need to. And if the king ever goes and approaches us, we can go behind the pawn on the D file. Because we have enough room. Right, okay. Because we're on the long side. And incredibly, white has no answer to this. Um, D6, if you try to block the checks with the rook, then our king can step in front. And we're going to draw in, in Philidor style. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
So that's not going to get it done. He also gives another example here. King e5 at once. Like this. Uh, let's see. He just goes back here. Because, I mean, you can't. Oh, yeah, that's the only legal move. But, I mean, you can't get in front of the other king and go around. Anyway, it's illegal and would get mated if, even if you could go there. Mm -hmm. And then here. And then, yeah, here's the problem is the king can't go here and defend the pawn because this is the long side. It's too far away. It took him too long to go stop the rook checks. He's too far away. Now he can't go here to defend him. So you have to defend with the rook, but then you're going to lose your pawn. Right. <clears throat> yes, you can't get too far away. Right. And that's the why pawn. the long side checking is, is the correct way to go. And you want your king on the short side. Okay. The... um. Yeah, so somebody was asking me, maybe it was intelligent, um, about playing me. We're going to stream, let's see, what time is it? It's, We've been on for about two hours now. Yeah, <laughs> I think we'll go till, um, if we have the energy, another hour and a half probably, or, you know, hour and 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Unclear, so we're going to take a break when it makes sense to in a few minutes, and I can play some people that are wanting to play. And then we'll do some more Silman. And then real quick, let me, just since I already interrupted you, I mean, this was, ah, oh, man. This was the link um, that Mr. Ilyas gave earlier for some Silman stuff that's already on chess.com if people want to go look at that later. Do you have to be a, like a member of chess.com um, to view that stuff? It might be the case. Used to, they had a limit. You could mm -hmm. see a certain amount of, if it's, that's, I'm not sure if, those are lessons, though. Yeah, I'm not sure about the lessons. I was thinking of the videos. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so anyways, d6, this is another try. Okay. But again, we can keep on checking. Keep on chugging. Even here, like we can keep checking if we want, but even this is enough to draw now. We're gonna win the pawn for sure at this uh, point. Yeah. Forces the draw. So that's the power of the long side. You check from the long side. They can't approach your rook and defend the pawn at the same time. It's too far away. Mm -hmm. Check, and the king is on the short side. That's good. And then your king doesn't get in the way of your own rook. Right. You know, if your king was here, then he could hide like on d6. You can't mm -hmm. check him from the long side then. You can only check him from the short side, which isn't going to work. Let's look at similar position here. Uh, uh, no, things are a little different. Not too much though. This is here, that's there. Like this. Okay. And it'll be white to move here. White to move even in this position with white's turn, it's a draw. Earlier we stated that a pawn on the fourth rank wins if the defending king is cut off by two files. In this position it's drawn because the king is only cut off by one file. That's true. Only one oh, okay. file. Okay. Well, this section is for what rating? rating? 1800 to 2000. Yeah, these in-game examples yeah, are from eighteen hundred to two thousand, Casper mm -hmm. vid. So we had we've done some um, easier ones in some of the earlier lectures. That's true. You can go check those out mm -hmm. on uh, on our YouTube channel. All right, so King F four. We can try E five. That seems like a good move since if Rook E eight. King e4 takes us to our first rule. A pawn on the fifth rank or beyond wins if the enemy king is cut off by one file on the long side of the board, which is what's happening here. He's on the long side because that's four and yeah. that's three, and he's cut off by one file. So this will win. However, <clears throat> instead of rook e8, which is a blunder, 
we can actually play rook a4, cutting the king off horizontally. Yes, and it's on the third rank, the king. Mm -hmm. Now they're both cut off. Yes. <laughs> now, if white moves the rook off the d file, we'll draw with king d7 to get in front, of course. And rook d4 is a drawn rook, king and pawn endgame, of course, for back to part one or two for that, I guess. Uh. Let's see. So what is he trying to go for? Let's say e6, right? Mm -hmm. Now white threatens to win. If it's white to play here, white wins by going here. Then we have to go here, only move. And then rook d8 would win. So now white's threatening to win. So we have to stop rook d8 with king c7. Now if e7, rook a8, rook d8, we just take it because we got two on it. And this holds the draw. For example, um, check. Well, if you go here now, this is a forced win of the pawn. Your king is too far away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> check. King c8, rook h7. To try to push the pawn. In, but now we can play king d8. And we're going to get our king in front of the pawn. There's no way you could possibly win with your king cut off and my king in front of your pawn. There's no way to win at all from here. So that's a good drawing technique when the king is far enough away. We can put our rook here to cut it off. And then if we goes further, he's threatening to do this. So we have to play a timely king c7 before he plays e7, of course. Then we can meet e7 with rook a8 and draw that way because the king's too far to approach at that point. All right, so let's try in this position king f4 instead of e5. Now we'll try to play e5, and then if our king ever gets cut off, it'll be further up. So we won't have the same situation we just had where our king can't, white's king can't approach in time. Right. <clears throat> we can check him. A frontal check is quite effective against the pawn on the fourth rank, he's saying, because it's kind of far back, I guess. King g5. Notice that king e5, check, 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 it doesn't help white because white has to step back to protect the pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that. Right, so he'll go off to the side a bit. Now, you don't want to check here. This would be a blunder for black. King f6. And if you check here, we can play king e7. Now we'll win. We'll just move our pawn up. You can't really stop me. So in this position, instead of giving the obvious check, we'll play to e8. X clam. Attacking the pawn. And so here's the problem for white. If you go back with the king to defend your pawn, we'll check you again. And we're in the same situation we just looked at. If you block with or protect with the rook, now our king can step in front and we'll get a Philidor draw. Good thing we already learned about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So the last try is this move. Move from the side. Yeah, protecting it from the side and still keeping the king cut off. The problem is after king c5 x clam, this is the resource that's drawing for black. Now the rook has to stay on the pawn. You know, you're not going to uh you're not gonna move like to d1, I'll take the pawn, right? If you go here, I can even attack your rook again. And then you can go back and I'll go back. And then we can repeat like that. So, um, and this is important to note, actually. If we go back to the start, if our king started on c7, it's not a draw. If the king started here on c7, that'll lose. Because we won't have king c5 in that position that we just looked at. Mm -hmm. And so that that's going to actually lose. Yeah. Well, if it's, white, if it's white's turn. If it was black's turn, black can play king c6 in that position and get to the position that we looked at here. But if, it, if the king was here and it's white's turn, white wins. Mm, can you just show it to us real quick? Just to help reinforce it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, same position, but white to play is going to win here. Um, 
So for example, we can do the same moves. King f4, check, king g5. Mm -hmm. And then here, like we saw, we don't check and then go here, right? That's not right. going to work. So we'll go king e, rook e8, king f5, check, king g6, and then we'll play rook d4. Now we can't go here right. anymore. So we could try, let's say, this here. You can't go here because I'll check you and then take your rook. So you have to try rook e5. And then we push our pawn, and now we're going to win. Okay. Our pawn got to the fifth rank where we cut him off one square on the long side. That'll win just like how we saw earlier mm -hmm. in this in this part. All right, now let's go back to this so, position. So do you think all these scenarios, like the super GMs, have just encountered it so much that they don't have to think? Or do you think it's still tricky enough that they have to, you know... Everybody always thinks. I know they always think. Yeah, there's never a position where they're like, I've seen this before, I'm instantly moving. That's not what I mean. I guess, um, okay. I mean, are they having to really, really... Um, spend a bit of time trying to figure it out or because they've studied it before it comes pretty quickly obviously they're not going to just do a robot type maneuver right they uh, they have experience and probably sh somebody shown them similar scenarios to this mm -hmm. like when they were younger and, and learning about chess uh, from their coach uh, but yeah that, that's not like they're going to immediately know like without thinking what the evaluation is all the time you know, if you showed some random rook and pawn in game like these to them, they'd have to think about it for a little bit to decide. Mm -hmm. But they might say, oh, yeah, I remember, like, I've had this situation and it was a draw. Or, like, I had this situation and I drew, but I was losing and I analyzed that my opponent should have done this to win. You know, they, they play a lot of games, they remember what they did and what happened to them, even in blitz games and stuff. I mean, I remember scenarios, rook and pawn in games that I even had in, in blitz games and I messed it up or still mm -hmm. drew or or whatever, you know. Oh, it seems in, they draw off their experience, right? Really. And it seems like the, um, the I guess looking at that Aronian Carlson game, um, that it was sufficiently, I mean, complex that they, they didn't know know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Since Aronian messed it up, right? Although it might have been a draw the whole time, right? Right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember. That's true. Well, I think it was actually because you looked at the evaluation and it was like plus one, one point something. Right. But still, I mean, it seems like even at that level, these these are sufficiently complex situations. Mm hmm Let's see. I sort of lost my place here. Okay, here we go. Like this. Okay, king c5, right. So here we are. This is correct, I think. Yeah, here. King c6. So because we have that king c5 resource, this is enough to draw because his pawn's also attacked, so he has to defend it. Check. King e5. An alternative here would be king g4. Mm -hmm. Black has to use some care. Poke the pawn. Give the check. Can't trade rooks in this case. So we'll play rook a8. Uh... Again, we you, he can't really let us like go here. So like e5, king, d7 is going to draw. That'll be a Philidor position draw. So rook f7 is what he gives here. Even though that allows this, we can still try to kick him out and right. check him and put our king in front. That would be the attempt to win at least. King f5, here comes a check. Obviously we can't block because then he'll just take it. So we'll go here. But then, yeah, we got this. And this will win the pawn. Even with this trick, we get opposition. Right. And then it's a drawn king and pawn in game that we've looked at. Mm -hmm. What chapter is this? This is part six. <laughs> part six. Hey, Master John. So king e5 instead of king g4. Here. You can make a waiting move. It's actually a little bit more than that because the idea is here after e5 we could play 
Yes, rook d7. Transposing to a draw in king and pawn and game. And also, yeah, we've seen this idea before where when the king was trying to run in front of the pawn. Uh, here it just forces the trade, though, because it's pinned. Yeah, and you can't get in front. Yeah, and draws. I forgot whose turn it was there for a second. <laughs> also, we can go here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Got him <laughs> for the first time ever. <laughs> I do that all the time. Nobody's ever played their king and not taken the pawn. I'm sure it does happen. <laughs> it's had to have happened at least once. Come on. Just not with me. Yeah, this chapter, Alan, is 18 to 1800 to 2000. Right, they're for A players. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got this book. I've had this book for a while, but I um, couldn't really do it by myself. It's more, more fun to do it with Spencer filtering out the nonsense. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you're not really filtering out a lot, but his philo you know, philosophical meanderings. Mm hmm when am I going to play you, Cameron? Soon, soon. All right, we'll look at this one last example. Then Karen can start playing some people. Yeah, we'll take a break. I'll play some people. This will end this, uh, this section of this part. Okay, and then we can decide what we're going to do. We're going to try to do a little bit longer stream today than usual. <laughs> so here, the stronger side has... Uh, the stronger side usually wins with a bishop or center pawn on the fourth rank if the defending king is trapped two files away, like it is here. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a knight pawn on the fourth rank, and that's a little bit more problematic. In this case, the stronger side usually wins if the defending king is three files away, which it's not. Here, it's only two. Um, so this is a draw, like he says. Okay. okay. Rook e2. White can't improve his position, so he passes, hoping that black will make a mistake. And there's only one move to draw here, king d6. According to, to Soman, this is the only way to draw. Let's look at the alternatives and see why. Okay. Rook g7, the problem here is that the rook is closer to the king and has thereby shortened its checking distance. Okay. So now we can step up and approach. Where now you can't check me anymore. Or you would be able to check me if you were on the 8th rank. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to win in, in Lucina style. Okay. If you move your rook away to try to check from the long side, that's actually not going to help. We'll push our pawn and our king will come forward. And then if you go back to try to erect the same defense, we can still approach with the king and you've shortened your checking distance. Because my pawn's approached. So that's not going to work either. Now, so sort of like the normal move would be king d4, in my opinion. This is still a blunder, since it allows white to cut off the black king on the rank. Rook e6, x clam. And then h6. So now the king actually can't go backwards, which is a winning technique here, as we'll see. Black's lost. His king can't get back into the fight, since the 6th rank is a no-pass zone, and white... Rook will block all checks on the H file, so we won't get checked here. Uh, here's a sample of what could happen. King E5, that's what you'd expect. Now you can't really approach with the king too much anyway. Even this move, you could just check him, I guess, and then play here and go back. So um, he tries a waiting move. But now we can approach with the pawn, kick him back. Run out of checks. Hey, Anibus. And g6. And now we've achieved a Lucina position. So sometimes cutting the defending king off along a rank is as good as cutting him off along a file. That's a very interesting example with rook e6 here. Really nice. Mm -hmm. So let's see, king d6. Mm -hmm. Why does that draw, though? Yeah. So if white does nothing... Black will do this. We won't make any of those other moves that blunder. So let's try rook e4 to protect our pawn. King d5, chasing the rook away. A mistake would be king d7. Check. 
check. Now we can approach because our pawn is defended. So now we can approach with our king and not lose our pawn. And this will win us the game. Followed by g5, g6, and a Lucina position. So we have to play king d5 here in order to poke the pawn. Of course, if you go here, we'll just take it. So rook e1. If the rook leaves the e-file, we'll go over here, and then we'll get our king in front. And, well, at least, you know, even if they go back here, that's just improved version for black, right? Because we're only one file away instead of two. Um, but yeah, rookie one is, is the defense, and then we could just go back. And there's no way that white can make progress. It, like we were saying, if white steps forward, we just get checked. If white ever goes in front of his rook, we can move our king over. And white can't push the pawn. White can't do anything. There's no way to improve here, actually. There's no way to, to try to make progress without letting black into the position with his king. Or can, getting checked repeatedly with the rook. So already here, white can agree to a draw. Do you like Silman's approach to teaching this material? Well, I think it, it's pretty good in general. I like it, how he builds. Um, like, for example, I mentioned the Lucina position and Philidor position here a lot. And so people who watched that, watched us discuss that, you know, mm -hmm. several days ago, they know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, then, you you know, you might be like, hmm, th does this really win? Because, you know, he says it's a Lucina position, it wins, but I don't know that. Um, well, you can just trust me or you can watch it <laughs> on our YouTube channel as mm -hmm. well. Um, or you, you can even find, like, the Lucina and Philidor positions are so... Um, are so well known that you can even look online and figure that stuff out. Mm -hmm. There's Wikipedia pages about them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, at first I didn't like the way they have a topic and then they only go so deep and then they go to another one, mm -hmm. or Silman goes to another one, but I think it's actually good. I think that's the right way to do it. Because when you cycle back, it's a nice review and then you build on it, so it's good to sort of revisit the, yeah. for, from a memory standpoint to see it, then leave it, do something else, well, and then come back. Plus, it doesn't make a lot of sense to look at something so technically um, when you already have other basic stuff you can learn. That's true. Like, if you're studying rook and pawn in games and you're looking at this before we looked at our king and pawn in games, mm -hmm. that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Right. You should an understand the basic king and pawn in games first, especially since we transpose to them, mm -hmm. as you've seen here. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, that's a smart way to do it. And I would also suggest that for your uh, opening study as well. Like, you shouldn't, like, study, like, just the London and just, like, one variation of the London. You should study, like, maybe if you're looking at the London, look at all of my opponent's options and what do I do against them. Mm -hmm. And then go deeper and deeper, like, go, go wider first. And then go deeper as you learn about, you know, all of the options your opponent has. And that, that'll help you to understand the opening. And it'll be easier to build your knowledge that way. <laughs> Alan, this isn't the best review. Hey, Briggs Keith. Um, hey, Kilovar. Triple zero, maybe um, I can play you. It depends on how many you want to play. But Alan says, I purchased How to Reassess Your Chess years ago, and he writes in a way that makes you think you'll understand it. But then you start playing games and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to definitely need some experience. You know, you can't hope to just read something and understand it and apply it to your games immediately. Yeah. You need to have uh, your own experience to draw from as well, really. To reinforce It's it, like, yeah. uh, what if you like watched a video about painting? Mm -hmm. And then you just start a painting. Like, you're not going to be a good painter. <laughs> you're not going to do what they said. You have to make some mistakes. Yeah, you got to do it over and over again and, and mess it up a hundred times. Start remembering. Hey, it's Basta. Hey, Basta. How's it going? So how about uh, we could take a, a little break here? Yep. All right. So the last part of this section, or mm -hmm. the last section of this part, I should say, mm -hmm. is about minor piece endgames. Oh, no. Actually, there is a queen endgame one after. Yeah, let's see if we can get it all... Going. I did, let's sit, let's go ahead and decide when I need to end. Right. Because I have to. Um, the queen one is really short, actually. Maybe it's changed. My situation's changed now because since Ben is here, he can take Archer, and I'll have to go back to the house. Mm -hmm. So I could probably go till five thirty. Okay. What time is it now? Almost five. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's get through this entire part six then. Yeah. We'll just see how it goes. Maybe we'll end before then. Or all right, so we'll take a look at this first part. It's uh, bishops of opposite colors. 
bishop and two connected pass pawns versus a lone bishop and king. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's. There we go. This one is going to start from, you know, a game. Uh, one would think that this end game with the two extra pawns would be an easy win for the connected pass pawns. It's two connected passers. Um, but this isn't the case. Let's indulge in a little history. In 1978 in London, uh, Silman was playing his second game with the white pieces in a span of a few months against Spielman, Jonathan Spielman. He won the first, did Silman, and now Spielman's out for blood. Let's see how the game went. Oh, he doesn't say which side is which. Oh, no, he actually, yeah, he said he was white. All right. Oh, he actually played Sicilian. And we got a Nidorf. This is unusual. I don't think he's ever had a whole game in here. Right. It's the first time. Now knight c6, which is a rare move, usually e6. Mm -hmm. Did Ben say he likes to play that or no? Maybe not. My dad plays it without the... It's not a knight the, Oh, okay. Yeah, he plays the classical yeah. Sicilian. And which this is transposed into now, by the way. This is a classical Sicilian by transposition. This is like a main line. I've had this position with white. I play f3. But he played f4. That's the old main move, f4. b5. Usually after b5, you take here it's like, because it can't play b takes. And then a common maneuver is to bring the knight around here. But this pawn is hanging, so he can't do that right now. So he plays this. Yeah, I only look relaxed. <laughs> That's true. Inside, she's freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says he prepared the system a year before, and whatever theory he had access to at the time promised good chances with bishop d3 followed by g6 h4. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks dangerous for black, but... He sat there wondering why his opponent was so confident. He just went into this like no big deal. Mm -hmm. And so he took a deeper look at the position for the first time instead of just memorizing the theory that he had learned from whatever wherever he learned it from. Uh, after pondering the situation for long enough, he realized that white doesn't have anything at all. For example, let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah. For example, after bishop d3 h four like this mm -hmm. queen f6 rook d f1 because his pawn was hanging h5 no no rook f d8 yeah i was thinking i don't think black should play f5 h5 white plays h5 that makes more sense yeah always play bishop f8 his opponent's bishop's pretty good on g7 he says it defends the black king and attacks the white king. That's true. It's sort of like in a dragon. Yeah. Years later, the, this position did occur um, in, a, in a game in the year 2000. C3, B4, F5 was the game. Takes, takes, G5. And black ended up winning. And this looks very good for black, in my opinion, because white doesn't have an attack anymore. And black does have an attack. Easy attack for black. But white can't get anything going now. Um, opposite color bishops are wonderful attacking weapons in the middle game. Because like you can attack and the other opponent the opponent's bishop can't defend. Mm -hmm. You can't defend on the dark squares here. But this bishop's not attacking, because it's blocked. He should like just move the pawn off the board. Then he'd be doing well. Like even not then. <laughs> Even no, no, not then. No yeah. Hey, by the way, in the game yes. where you said I never trade queens, I did trade my queen for the two rooks. Well, that's winning material. So. Uh -huh. And also, you would lose your rook otherwise. So, you know, that doesn't count. Uh, doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. So, during the game, he began to panic, and then he played a little bit cowardly. Like me. Yes. Here, and he traded queens, unlike Karen, <laughs> or, or like Karen. I don't know. 
<laughs> and then g3 protecting his pawn. So now he's obviously not uh, better with white or doing anything. If anybody's better, it's black here. Pretty clearly. h4, good idea. And rook d1. Clearly playing for a draw. Since leaving too many pieces on would actually make the bishops of opposite colors useful for black, I made sure to exchange everything that wasn't nailed down. Bishops of opposite color, here's a rule. Bishops of opposite color often give the defender serious drawing chances in the end game, even if he's one or two pawns behind. So Spielman's trying to win with black here, clearly. Oh, actually, I don't think he took, maybe. I just instantly did that. We arrived at this following situation. My opponent was getting a bit excited, no doubt due to the fact that both my g-pawns were in bad shape. <laughs> Losing them would lead to two connected pass pawns. But he knew that he could draw this. Let's look at a different position, and we'll come back to it. Okay. Yeah, you know, I am just always have been a calm person, the suspenser. That's true. Outwardly. And thank you, Crocodile Style. He likes the stream. <laughs> Sometimes I can do that. Hey, MG Weirdo. This position okay. is the one that he knew already. All right. Which this position is a dead draw. Black to play. If white loses both the G-pawns and loses the three against two, like in his game he had three against two. Mm -hmm. And in this scenario he's lost both the G-pawns and he lost a pawn on the queen side in this way. Um, still, it's a draw. This extreme position in this diagram didn't occur uh, and the actual game ended without any adventures. Let's look at how the game ended. I'll put it back to our position that we were at. Which okay. is not too different. Because, you know, those pawns are the same. Like this. Move this here. And move this there. But come on, stay a black bishop, yes. All right, so yeah, in the game, black to play. He actually didn't take this g pawn. He stepped up with the king. A4. Again, he's got to try to trade the pawns off, like we saw. And then he took here, and then he took here. Well, certainly white's not losing this position. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's the same position, but he still has two pawns. Right. And draw agreed. Yes. So after seeing that other position where it was two pawns against zero, uh, you might be thinking, someone let Silman loose in the pharmaceuticals again. <laughs> 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 Got him. All right, let's take a look at that other position to see why he's uh, not on drugs. Although he probably is. But, you know, it, he's still right. <laughs> it's true, Dork the Cat. I'm sorry you missed it. Because we didn't stream yesterday, we were trying to do a longer stream today. But um, obviously you can watch it on the video on demand, but it's not the same. Or on the YouTube when we get it up yeah. there as well. <clears throat> Silman and his pharmaceuticals. All right, let's say Black tries to bring his king to d4 right. without pushing the pawns. That'll be our first method to attempt the win. King f5. Bishop e8, x-clam. Force him to move those pawns. Mm -hmm. Never play that. And then here. Now the black king is stuck defending the pawn, so you can't go here. Because I'll take it. I always mess this kind of position up. Now black will have to push his pawns if he wants to win. You know, because this pawn's here, and, and you won't be able to move the king if you don't push your pawn. Right. Which we'll examine that next. Um, 
we discovered here an important idea, bishop e8 to d7. That was an important defending idea. When defending this kind of opposite color bishop endgame, the defender can tie his opponent's king down by using his bishop to attack the pawns, thereby forcing the king to protect or forcing the pawn to move forward. But as you might imagine, this kind of position won't have a lot of winning chances. Mm -hmm. Just go here and back all day or whatever. Okay. All right, let's try another winning attempt. Black just pushes the pawns forward. F5. Bishop b3, x-clan. Rule, the defender must attack the enemy pawn with his bishop in order to tie down the enemy king. That's true. This fine move gives black two choices. He could play king f6 and guard the pawn for the rest of the game, uh, which means he'll make no progress whatsoever, or he can push the pawn forward, which is clearly what black's aiming for anyway. However, once the pawn moves forward, we can demonstrate an important defensive idea. Um, bishop c2. There we go. There we have it. Obviously, now we can't push the pawn because then we'll just take it mm -hmm. and get the both the, the pawns off the board for the bishop. In this position here, black threatens, like if you play a random move, to play e4 check, king e3 bishop check, and then continue with the bishop and king and pawns down the board which uh, could actually lose. For example, he gives a variation here. Blunder, check, check, f4. Now the pawns are very far advanced. For example, bishop c2, check, never play f3. King f4, e3, check here. Now it seems like we still could draw it, right? I would think it looks seems like, like we still could draw it, but all black has to do is march the king around here. And then we can play e2, and you can't sacrifice your bishop. Well, you can, but you only get one pawn instead of two. And there's nothing that white can really do about this. Yeah, king bishop a6, king d4, bishop b5, king c3. Oh, bishop b5, king c3. Check in here, and then this move's coming next and wins. Oh, yeah. Here's a rule. In this kind of endgame, two connected pass pawns on the sixth are winning. The defender must not allow the pawns to get that far. Yes. Yeah, we're still going, working class hero. <laughs> so, f4, bishop b3, e5, bishop c2. That's the defense. The pawns are on the fifth rank. Uh, well, it's actually sort of the fourth rank because it's black who has them. But uh, we're not letting him go as deep into the territory as we saw. Believe it or not, this simple move uh, ends the game. Black can no longer generate any kind of threat whatsoever. One difference here with when it was on the sixth rank is that the bishop attacks this pawn. So you can't bring your king around town because you hang your pawn. Right, yeah like we could in the other variation. Mm -hmm. Pretending like we missed the fork, right? <laughs> oh, don't read that, because... Uh, <laughs> all right, I won't read that. <laughs> oh, well, what, what do you never I reading? thought she was at, out already, so she couldn't hear us read anything. <laughs> Black would have chances if he could get his king to d4, like how we saw... Uh, but the attack on f5 freezes it. So all white has to do is go back and forth. And, uh, yeah, you'll never be zugzwanged here. Right. Like, you would be zugzwanged if this was here and that was there, and everybody's on the sixth rank. Yeah. Then you can't move back and forth. Right, yeah. But here you, you can. So no zugzwang. Oh, she is still out? Okay. Let's compare two positions that seem very similar, yet the results turn out to be different. That's what I like to do. Yeah, me too. It helps understand it better. Right. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you were still out. <laughs> she might smell that beer. 
<laughs> Quit getting him in trouble over here. No, he said he needs to get back before so she'll never know. <laughs> I know he's joking because she'll know. <laughs> so this position is, it's over. White didn't let the black pawn get to the sixth rank, so all you have to do is go back and forth. And black can't even attempt to make any progress. You know, what can you do? You can't go around here right. and we'll take the pawn. Can't push, we'll take that. So if I go back and forth, there's nothing you can do to try to win. Draw a green immediately. Mm -hmm. Now let's flip it. There we go. Now this is actually going to be losing. Yeah, so the other position was a dead draw, but this is a loss. I'm guessing it's because the bishop's not attacking that pawn anymore. Yeah. Like it was in the other position. So black can use his king to help. Mm -hmm. Black's king is... Yeah, this is what he's saying. Uh, because the e-pawn would be hanging, right? Yeah. So in this losing position, the e4-pawn... This, this is a position that's losing for white. The e4-pawn is not attacked by the white bishop... So now the black king is indeed free to roam. After king d3, king d4 rather, to e3, we'll play f3 and win. This move, you can't stop me because my bishop's there. Then I'm going here next after that, and then I'll win by force. Mm -hmm. Get our pawns to the sixth rank, and then and it wins like we already saw. So remember, the correct defensive stance is to have the defender's bishop tying down the enemy king to one of the pawns. This is not... A correct defensive stance because of that. So some of you might be wondering what happens if black leaves his pawns back a bit and instead strives to improve the position of his king in order to avoid the draw we've seen. Um, okay, let's look at a simple example of this and ignore every, all the words that he says. Here we go. Get this guy here. A couple of pawns. Oh. Come on, you usurped his position there. Here, and then this. Black has one shot, one opportunity. In this position, we're, we're familiar with uh, this, like, king, if d4, rather, bishop c2. This is the draw that we've already seen. The bishop attacks the pawn, so the king can't go here, and you can't go there, and thereby you can't possibly win the position if black only had a king yes a queen a queen right right i can't read sorry. <laughs> but i understood the joke so let's say black uh, tries a little bit trickier here and plays king d4 right now if white does nothing like here and then there the bishop's out of territory goodbye bishop it's like goodbye horses oh, it would be funny if it was a knight because you know <laughs> so white can't just sit around and and hope to draw by um you know by doing nothing like like we did earlier but as you might imagine the way to stop the king from moving forward is to attack this pawn bishop a2 easy for the record also by the way Bishop c2 doesn't lose yet. Here you have to play king d1. And here white actually still draws, but it's a little tougher. We, it makes a lot of sense to just play king, bishop a2 to stop the king from advancing. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if they play like some random move, we just keep our bishop attacking the pawn. Don't want to move away. Hang on oh, here second. comes some family. Sweet. What's that? Can I go down to them? Yeah, um, and we're we're nearing another meal. Are you hungry yet? Um, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. And then bishop back to b1 mm -hmm. to set up the same defensive setup that we've had, and this will draw. Nice. Pretty instructive stuff there. Hey, Stan is for a king. Now, what does that mean? There's vomit on a sweater. On the it was the sweater. uh, it was the song I was singing. One oh. shot, one opportunity. Oh, I wasn't listening. Okay. <laughs> kind of, you gotta pay attention for the jokes. <laughs> Chip in zero one. That might be Oliver. That is Oliver. Oh, go back. 
<laughs> Back to where? Back to where I once belonged. <laughs> You go back. Bishops don't wear sweaters. And if you were the Pope, they'd be like, straighten up your Pope hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Futurama one. Anyways, ignoring Oliver for now, let's move on to the next thing. He says King F5. That's what you'll say. Let's see if where we can ever play King. You mean right here, King F5? I'll just do nothing. I just do nothing all day. That's what I do. I'm pretty good at it. His name was, it was you. That's from Stan. <laughs> Jay Slim always does Stan. I know. He's, he, he never he, does anything. He, I, last time I saw him, it was Stan. It's, I've never heard him do anything. Well, one time, I, one, no, one time I did hear <laughs> him do um, another, I, I don't know if it was another Eminem song or not. So now I have a question then since yes. Oliver brought this up. Um. Oh yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Never mind. I gotta get my hair professionally dyed crazy. Thanks. I do know Eminem. Yes. Well, I, I you know I lived in Michigan most of my life, so you hear a lot of Eminem on the radio, of course. Mm hmm. All right. Let's talk about the next thing. Hey, would you ever do consider doing Eminem at doing Stan or something? I like singing more than rapping. Yeah. But I think I have the uh, the necessary energy to rap, don't you think? Yeah. Definitely. I was going to try not a rap, but a hip-hop, but um, where there's, you know, mix. Mm -hmm. But um, since I'm Southern and I speak slow, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Ask him to slow it down a little bit. I have to, bit. like, completely change my delivery. I yeah, think make I, it like 30 beats I think I could do something. it. I think I could do it. I just have to speed it up. Yeah, where's the... Hey, Lady Buell. Um, I'm not going to dye my hair, Boss Key Farmer, because it's too much work, it is to, a lot of work to maintain it. Especially when your hair is so long. Yeah, well, I need to get cut. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, I do love colored hair, I have to say. Yeah, me too. Love it. <laughs> Loving every minute of it. <laughs> All right, now we'll talk about fortresses in a bishop up endgame. So somebody's going to be a bishop ahead. The idea of a defensive fortress is pretty important. You're not expected to memorize lots of fortress examples. Instead, seeing a few patterns and keeping the possibility in mind will serve you well. Fortresses in bishop up endgames are fairly common, but don't tell Sam Shanklin, am I right? Is that referencing a particular... Yeah, where he resigned against Geary and it was a draw. Oh, I heard about it. I yeah. just haven't seen that. That was a bishop up end game. I oh, think. okay. <laughs> so usually they occur when the stronger side has a rook pawn or a knight pawn that gets down to the 6th or 7th rank. Or if the rook, uh, rook pawn is the wrong color, like how we've seen many times before. Rule, there are no fortresses for bishop pawn, queen pawn, or king pawn. Interesting if true. Hey, um, since you're here, I'm here, can I, instead of going home, maybe let Archer go with that you? That was the idea. Oh, awesome. I wanted to go to Publix, but I don't know if I should. Yeah. Probably just not. I mean, he can go in. He's got a mask. Ooh. Do you have a mask? He well, went, what's the problem? He went to get a drink at Van Manelli's when he comes. Yeah, I heard the door. We're going to end in a minute. Are you, You're not leaving right in the second, are you? Ooh. Oh, okay, good. I did my two videos. Yay. Hooray. It is Benjamin, yes. This looks like the kind of game Shanklin would resign. I already made that joke. <laughs> yes, it is the kind of thing that Shanklin would resign. And then Geary would demand a draw. Right. So this will probably be the last. Is there, oh, actually, how many examples are there? Oh. This is where we are. And then oh, this yeah, is well, the, oh, let's try to finish. Section, let's yeah. try to finish. Them. <clears throat> so white know. reaches a dead end if black shuffles his king between c8 and b8. You can't approach and win. In there. Uh, now I have to do legal moves only. God dang it. You could lose on purpose. You could lose on purpose. It's not easy, but you could do it. Yeah. And then if here, there. It is kind of tough because you have to run away and then not stand. No, you, you made it. King c6 and play king a8. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's a good way to lose on purpose. Yeah. Although, okay, so I have to waste a move right. here. And then here. And then lose on purpose. And then mate. Right. Nice. I was but this on purpose be... before Spencer was born. 
That move would be preferred, king c8. <laughs> Definitely. All right, let's look at another similar example. Just with a couple little changes. This will go there. And you can give him another pawn. Why not? So now it's a bishop and a pawn ahead. So Shanklin couldn't wait to resign at this point. But it's a draw. Note that sacrificing the b-pawn to give him some more squares to work with is not enough because like we saw in the previous example that was still a draw mm -hmm. so for example bishop d5 you can never play here because that forces a stalemate right so all you could do is move your bishop back and forth and i'll just go back and forth myself and if you ever stop me it's stalemate so he tries to queen but this is back to the same position that we just looked at draw all right, we'll look at another one. Actually, I already mentioned this one when we talked about wrong color, or it's actually two pawns against zero. This is like part one or two. Here, this position. Draw. You can't win from this position with white. I already mentioned why, because you can't play here equals queen. If right. it's a pawn, you win. They take it, you go here, they go there, you push, and then you win. King a7, king c7. <clears throat> but with the bishop, you have to sacrifice the bishop on this square, which that's not gonna, that's not gonna w work for opposition. After I take, you can't get opposition because I'm on g8 instead of h8. So this is a draw. If only mm -hmm. you could play h1 equals queen. He says, just like I said, bishop's worse than a pawn here. Mm -hmm. Draw. N nothing to analyze. Let's look at like this. Yeah, I don't know what videos he did, Sad Red Berry. Uh -huh. This one's also a draw. All black has to do is play king g8 to h8. You can't win. There's no way. Mm -hmm. You can never attack the pawn without stalemating me is the problem. You have to go here or here and then both stalemate. Even still, I can't, yeah, I can't move away to undefend it. So. Right. Draw. Even this position, like this, is a draw. With the king outside the corner and the bishop here. You think like, oh, maybe I can win this, right? Because the king's not getting stalemated. But even this is a draw. White has no chance of winning if black's king gets to g8 and h8, which means that this bishop must stay here the whole time, or else I'm running over here, right? Right. But... What are you going to do? You can't approach the pawn without stalemating me. You can't approach the pawn at all. You can't come around here and attack the pawn. And if you go here or here like he is now, it's stalemate. Or if you move the bishop, then I could go in the corner and it'll draw the way that we saw earlier. So, yeah, if it's a knight pawn or a rook pawn, we have opportunities for a, a fortress, but... With bishop and center pawns, you're not going to get a fortress situation that we've just seen in this example or the previous two or three examples. For example, let's say that we move everything over. Like this here, there, here, like that. Now white to play wins pretty handily. So all we have to do is not stalemate them, first of all, right? And then we could just step up. And now here, this would be stalemate if we move the guys over. Mm -hmm. But because he has an extra H file to work with, not stalemate. He goes here, we take, game over. Yeah. It doesn't get too much mm -hmm. easier than that. Yeah, that's pretty easy. All right, so that's all he had for opposite color bishop or, or bishop up end games that are a draw. Mm -hmm. But next time we can pick up with the queen end games in this part, and then we'll be done with this part. Okay, and that's part six? Yeah. Okay. Almost done with part six. You'll know as much as an expert about mm -hmm. the opening. Mm -hmm.